Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to look at soloing on minor swing. This video is a request from Chico Converse and thank you for asking for this. I'd entirely uh, overlook the fact that I haven't done a video on minor swing, despite that being probably the most popular of Django Reinhardt's gypsy jazz tunes. So I'm going to give you 20 licks um, which you can use in this solo. Uh, a couple of things before we start. If you want to learn Stefan Grappelli's original solo, then have a look at Gabriel Bismuth's uh, video where he goes carefully over that solo with on-screen sheet music, which you will find useful. If you want to learn about the melody, uh, the bit that becomes at the beginning and the end, then I have a video on Patreon which will explain all about that. Um, what I'm going to show you today, these 20 licks are mostly generic type licks, and uh, I'm hoping to explain something about each one which will enable you to use it in other places. So this is not just about what you can use on minor swing, but you should be able to use most of these licks in other places. And that to me is the biggest advantage of learning licks individually rather than learning whole solos. So we're going to start off with some uh, licks based on arpeggios which can be transposed between the different chords. And the chord sequence we're talking about is A minor, D minor, E7, A minor. D minor, A minor, E7, A minor. So not much in the way of difficulty in terms of the chords. Some versions of this tune will use a B flat over the last E7. So it might go from B flat to E7. Uh, I'm not going to go deal with that um, in this video. Partly because when Grappelli played this, he largely ignored the B flat, even if it was played. So we're just going to treat that as an E7. So we'll start off with some arpeggio licks based around A minor. So here's a nice simple one. And here I'm just going up and down the arpeggio. But I'm doubling each note and I'm using chain bowing, which is a particular swing bowing technique. So we're starting with one down and then we're slurring every pair. Let's just hear that played over A minor. Now you can transpose the same thing into D minor, E7, and obviously you wouldn't want to do that too much, but occasionally taking one lick and moving it up or down to the next chord is a good idea because it gives you some kind of continuity in your soloing. And what you really don't want to be doing is constantly jumping from one idea to the next and never referring back to what you've just done. So let me just do uh, once round where I'll do this a few times and I will um, place it in different places depending on the chords. Notice how I was modifying the lick uh, to suit wherever I happened to be starting the particular lick and wherever I wanted to finish. So don't think that a lick that you learn is something that you have to keep absolutely pristine as you learnt it. Um, the more you can modify it and bend it the better. So here's another one based on arpeggio. So instead of starting on the root we're starting on the third. Going up and down again. So in D minor that will be starting on E but with the third it will be and you can echo the structure of the, um, the phrase going down as well as up. 
So if it starts coming down, you can go up or vice versa. And again, this makes it more interesting if you're going to repeat it. Let's just try that again with chords. Now here's one based on triplets and uh, descending triplets. So we're going down the arpeggio. And we're slurring each triplet to do D minor. You could start on the D. And obviously you can't go, unless you've got five strings, you can't go down further, so I'm just kind of twisting it at the end. So we're starting before the bar line on an A into third position. For D minor and for E. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, as you will notice, I. Uh, I'm not transposing perfectly each time, and uh, I could if I spend enough time working it out, but I'm not going to. And that's really not the point. The idea is to have the basic idea and to follow that through. Um, and as I said before, you can play each one just individually, just play it once, or you can play it several times. Right, let's move on to harmonic minor licks. So the A minor scale, A harmonic minor scale is... Now this is a useful scale because it suits the E7 because it's got the G sharp in it. Um, so a lick that works on A minor will also work on E7 and in fact these do work best on E7. But let's try um, this lick. Try that through all three chords and see what it sounds like. Much, but uh, over the let's say over the E7 followed by the D minor then that does sound pretty good and you could improvise more and more creatively using that scale here's another one using the scale so we're starting on the uh, A and then coming down let's hear that sounds best on the E7 followed by the A minor. Okay, now here's some A minor blues licks. So the A minor blues scale would be... And with just a little bit of swing and syncopation we can make this into a lick. And 
and being a blue scale this is pretty flexible and it will work fairly nicely on all three chords. that there are certain stresses and strains which the chords put on a lick like that and it's interesting to hear how the, uh, the lick changes in its nature as the different chords change behind it. Here is a Grappelli blues lick that he used I think on, his, um, on one of his recordings. This is a very typical uh, blues type lick. So we're going third position, th uh, third finger, first finger. Open string, first position. Let's hear that against the three chords. So it works pretty well on all of the chords, but um, of course you wouldn't use it as many times as that. Um, another Grappelli lick, um, starting on the high D, and doing that little slide that Grappelli likes so much, just going up half a semitone. So one, two, three. I'll do that again, one, two, three. So we got the blue note uh, three times, the high E flat, the mi middle E flat and the bottom E flat. And I think Grappelli used this uh, starting on the E7 and going down to the E minor, but again it will work in a lot of different positions. And even starting with the, um, in the middle of a bar it will still work rather than starting at the beginning of a bar. repeating bits, leaving bits out. It, it provides an excellent basis for moving out into proper improvisation. So before we go any further I'm just going to play a couple of times around the sequence and I'll just mix and match some of these different ideas. Django Reinhardt's favourite tricks was using the uh, minor 6 note. So on a A minor chord, that's the minor 6. And here's a little lick. Um, and we're using syncopation to place the, um, the emphasised note, the F sharp, in different places. Let's 
just hear that. And I will also take it to the D minor. same idea uh, and this is also not only emphasizing the minor six but it's a hemiola which means it's a three note phrase repeated uh, over the bar line so one two three one two three one two and this the, the hemiola is a very useful trick for making simple licks sound more interesting that one in A minor will be. Let's hear that repeated a few times. same combination of ideas uh, again on the D minor and this one is from Grappelli's solo so it's one two three four one to use over the E7 chord. Jason Anik has a great video where he does a lot of great licks and one of them for the E7 is... Um so going up the E arpeggio, slide up to the D and going from the G sharp with my third finger to the F natural with my second finger. And here's another one, and this is a substitution. So instead of we're doing, we're do, making it F diminished, which contains most of the same notes, but is more interesting. And there's lots of different approaches to this, but this lick um, is a really nice one for going up, and there's lots coming down as well. So I would normally use my th uh, fourth finger to do the G sharp because a, sec a third finger to the second finger is too big a stretch for me. Let's hear those two licks. favourites and one of my favourites. So starting on an open E, fourth finger in, um, first finger in fourth position playing a B note, fourth finger playing in high E. And we're doing one, two, three, ba da da. I think the Boeing really helps this. Three separate, and then three slurred, and then two separate. And then another Grappelli lick. Um, so this is uh, an interesting one. He's using the, the ninth note, which is the F sharp. So 
So it's the same rhythm as before, but um, a different uh, set of notes. Let's hear those two together. the same set of notes but a different relationship with the chords. Uh, let's finish off with four different licks which I call high intensity repeatable licks. So these are really simple uh, but therefore when you have reached the end of your solo and you want to get the audience whipped up into a, a, a state when they're going to applaud your solo. Um, this is something that only happens in jazz bands, uh, the applause of an individual solo. And uh, it doesn't happen with all bands and it doesn't happen in all gigs, but if it does happen, then there's nothing worse than the guitarist <laughs> getting all the applause and you not getting any. And I did indeed used to play in a band, um, a gypsy jazz band, where the lead guitarist, uh, he lived for the applause that he got. And um, if I didn't get it, then I felt really bad. So I had to compete in a way that wasn't very natural to me, but I had to make sure that my solo ended on a high. So, stuff like this. Um... It's really effective. Let's just hear that with some chords. And you can see that that works uh, equally well over any of the chords. Here's another one. So this is uh, just two notes. We're in third position, we're starting on the high C. First finger staying down the whole time. And I'm just sliding that third finger up a little bit from being slightly flat. And this will work over all three chords. finish off with a couple of real high intensity ones. So this is one which would work equally well in a, <laughs> a metal song. So we're going third position, uh, third finger, first finger and open. And depending on, on how fast you go, you might do three notes to a bow, more likely six notes to a bow, or 12 notes to a bow, or if it's really fast, uh, 16 notes to the bow. And another one, um, so same set of notes but just going down, 3, 1, open. Uh, let's hear those two together. So that is 20 licks that you can use. Uh, you won't like all of them, you might not want to do all of them, but some of them you will find really useful. And uh, as I said before, do try and transport these licks from minor swing into other numbers, particularly minor numbers, but uh, a lot of them can be made into major licks as well. Um, stuff like the high intensity repeating E will work just as well 
over an A chord as it will over an A, a minor chord. Uh, I hope you found this useful. If you would like a copy of all of these licks, then do subscribe to the channel and send me an email and I will very happily send you a copy of the 20 licks. And if you want to learn the melody and some variations on that, then have a look on my Patreon page and you will see um, that I have that on there. And also on Patreon, I do have a little collection of Gypsy Jazz standards, which you might find useful. Um, thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.